So can I just start by saying, firstly, I want to do some thanks. I want to thank all the student groups for uh, working so hard to get these very impressive uh, buildings up and ready for today. Um, I particularly want to thank all of those individual students who have worked so hard on all of this, both from Turkey and from Dublin. Secondly, I want to thank um, all of our huge supporters from Whole Brain Health, Tuya, um, Liz, and uh, Fran, and Katz, and all the others who have been so helpful and so supportive. Uh, and from my point of view, I also want to thank Magua and his team for the huge amount of effort and support they've put in to ensuring that everybody could work well together um, and support that team sensibility. Can I remind everybody that uh, this is about you getting some experience in working as a team in a virtual environment. And so in your presentation, uh, don't think of things as going wrong or things as not working. Everything that has happened since you started this course is an experience or a learning opportunity. And if you can extract and demonstrate the learning that you've achieved from that, whether things have gone wrong or they've gone right, then you're in a winning position. So remember that. This is about you demonstrating your experience to us. Um, can I just ask that only the teams that are presenting should have their speak buttons active? So in order to try and keep um, interference and noise to a minimum, it would be great if everybody else could turn off their mics. Um, so please try not to forget that. Also, don't forget to turn your mic on when it's your turn to speak. Um, and with that, and wishing you all the best of luck with your presentations, I'd like to hand over to Magua. Hello, good evening to everyone. And um, not much left for me to say, actually. They all covered everything, pretty much. But uh, I would like to thank everyone for their a great effort that that has been put into this course and uh thank you john and uh Sairam in your uh team and thank you whole brain health and uh thank you uh, ginger sabrina and everyone else who contributed uh, for the uh, facilitation of this event and um the students i think you did pretty impressive job here by building these uh, stages for your, your presentations uh, that's a that's quite hard thing to do at least for me i mean i've been here for 14 15 years probably i can't build better than you guys did in in a very short time so uh, i encourage you to continue this and uh, i'm sure you'll be all doing a very good job in your presentations as well good luck and Let's start. Hello, everyone. I'm Nemeso. Welcome to presentation of Green Team. I would like to introduce our team, Patricia, Golden Baby, and me from China University, Kenny and Joanna from Dublin University. First of all, you will make us very happy if you buy, na buy the nature appropriate shirt which is our own product production from the box in front of you and we read. Afterwards, I recommend you, you to read the poem Be Prepared for the Environment by clicking on the waterfall located just to the right of the entrance. And finally, we have a video right about the lecture you can watch it too. Today we are going to talk about climate change. Climate change continues to become a great threat to our work day by day. We wanted to emphasize this and we choose this topic for our presentation. Our presentation will begin with Golden Baby explaining what global warming is. 
I hope you like our presentation. Have a good time in advance. Hello, I am Golden, uh, Golden Baby. Now I will tell you what a climate change is. The climate system is a complex and interactive system that includes the atmosphere and services known and ice, oceans and other bodies of water and living things. This system gradually changes over time under the influence of its own internal dynamics or depending on the change in external factors. Climate change is defined as change in the average state and variability of the climate over a period of decades or more by the word the cause. Climate change is a geographical period not only change the world's geography but also causes permanent change in ecological system, especially that glacial movements and change in sea level. The global cl climate change mentioned today refers to the increase in the average surface temperatures of the Earth as a result of the rapid increase in greenhouse gas accumulation released into the atmosphere by human activities, suggest burning of fossil fuels, land use, change, deforestation, and industrial process detracting the natural greenhouse effect. Hello, I'm Petrikor. I will tell you about the causes of global climate change. Using fossil fuel. Carbon dioxide is released during the combustion of fossil fuels used in industrial facilities, energy production, transportation and heating. Greenhouse gases such as methane, nitrous oxide and water vapor all are also released during the extraction and combustion of fossil fuels and the generation of electricity in thermal power plants. Deforestation Trees play a role in the carbon cycle by storing some of the carbon in the atmosphere. The destruction of forests to obtain timber, agriculture and settlement areas and the resulting deterioration of carbon balance have an impact on global climate change. Agricultural practices In water-saturated swamp plants, where rice is grown, bacteria produce methane, which is a greenhouse gas 20 times, per, 20 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Urban heat islands Urbanization also plays a role in global warming, although it's not as strong an effect as greenhouse gases. Urban heat island is when a city is warmer than the surrounding countryside. The settlement plants do not allow the passage of winds, and air circulation also prevents the cooling of the cities. Wastes with the increase in industrialization and consumption, an increasing amount of waste is produced. And the gases released by the burning of these wastes also cause global warming. That's all. Hey guys, my name is Christian and today I will be talking about the consequences of climate change. There is five main results from this. The temperature rise has not been and will not be uniform or smooth across the world over time. In a future in which heat trapping gas emissions continue to grow, increases of a month or more in the lengths of the frost free and growing seasons are projected across most of the world by the end of the century. Average precipitation has increased since 1910, but some areas ha have had increases greater and some areas have had decreases. This will evidently lead to more flooding and more droughts. 
Summer temperatures are projected to continue rising and a reduction of soil moisture which brings extreme heat waves. Global sea level has risen by about 8 inches since reliable record keeping began in 1880. It is projected to rise another 1 to 8 feet by 2100. This is the result of added water from melting land ice and the expansion of seawater as it warms. Hi, my name is Johanna and I'm going to explain what needs to be done. The Uh, the UN Secretary General has promised six climate positive actions for the government to take once they go about building back their economies and societies. The green transition investments must accelerate the, the decarbonisation of all aspects of our economy. Green jobs and sustainable and inclusive growth. Green economy, making society and people more resilient through the transition that is fair and leaves no one behind. Invest in sustainable solutions. Fossil fuel subsides must end and the polluters must pay for their pollution. Confront all climate change. Um, confront all climate risks. Cooperation, and no country can succeed alone. We must make all our work, we must all work together to pres pressure our leaders into inciting change, with full commitment and whole rewrite of how we, we and our economies and workforce operate. We must be able to save our planet. Thank you. Thanks for listening, to us. Hi everyone and welcome to our presentation. Uh, we are the red team and the area we were given the, within the United Nations Sustainable Goals was society. From this we picked out gender equality as our focus. We will discuss uh, gender equality and uh, you can press the statue for gift card. It's about the gender inequality. It's a poem. Uh, we did it. and. Um, Firstly, gender discrimination or gender inequality has always existed in the past and present. The place of women is that there are few management staff and in normal life or not at all. Gender discrimination mostly happens on women and girls. For instance, one in five girls married before turning 18. One in four girls is out of secondary school and Half of women in low middle income countries have no decision making power over their own bodies. And uh, what is the gender equality? Okay, we talk about the gender inequality, but what is the gender equality? This is an important issue in the field of the human rights. Gender equality means the equal participation of men and women on an equal basis in all public and private life. This is not a special for uh, women. It's uh, important all of us. And uh, gender equality is a fundamental human right. It means a healthy society for men and women, including promoting gender equality, reducing poverty, supporting health, education, protection, and welfare. And uh, thank you for listening to me. And on the call, we'll continue next step to presentation. Hi, everyone. Okay. Elimination of all forms of discrimination against women and girls is not only a fundamental human right. It is also critical to acceleration sustainable development. It has been proven time and again that empowerment of women and girls creates a multiplier effect and accelerated, accelerates economic growth and development in all areas. For this, I would like to give some information about the miseries taken from general specific and the work done. UNDP together with other UN partners and the international community has placed gender equality at the center of this work since 2000. Today, 
More girls go to school than 15 years ago. Gender equality in primary education has been achieved in most regions. Women now make up 41% of the non-agriculture's paid workforce. This rate was 50, 55, 35% in 1990. Okay. In addition, UNDP abolished child marriage forced early marriage and female genital mutilation for sustainable development purposes, provided unpaid care and housework uh, utilities, infrastructure and social protection policies. It supported the full and effective participation of women in the decision-making process of political, economic and social life. Thank you for listening. And Hasan Surten is going to continue. Hello everyone, I'm going to talk about gender equality in education. There is a major problem affecting countries around the world. That problem is gender equality in education. 31 million girls worldwide are unenrolled in primary school. 34 million adolescent girls are unenrolled in middle school. And 17 million girls are expected to never even enter school at all. In poor countries, girls are forced into domestic work and marriage. There is no room for an education. Almost a quarter of women aged 15 and 24 have never completed primary school. That is 116 million women. Three specific countries have never over 1 million girls not in school. Those are Pakistan, Ethiopia and Nigeria. There are 4 million fewer boys than girls unenrolled in school. Two or three of them, 774 million illiterate people in the world are female. That is over 510 million women. Illiteracy keeps householders in a cycle of poverty with little hope of getting out. So, how do we fix this problem? The solution starts with education. The first step is education families about the importance of receiving an education. Good quality of education provides more career, op more career opportunities for women, economic growth and reduced poverty. Change start with addressing cultural gender norms. These norms promote discrimination and limit the extent to which well-qualified women gain access to better jobs. Who stands to benefit from gender equality in education? All of us. This is what education does for women. Educated women are more likely to find work. Educated women are less likely to die in childbirth. And educated women have control over their lives. This is a major problem affecting countries around the world. And together, we can fix it. Now my friend uh, Frankie is continue to our presentation. Hello everybody. Oh, sorry, just getting speakeasy. Um, Turkey ranks 133rd worldwide and 7th in the Middle East and North Africa in terms of gender equality. Sorry, my speakeasy isn't functioning. Um, Turkey's current individual goals for increasing their rank are to end violence towards women, increase the number of women in education, and increase the number of women in the workplace. Ireland ranks ninth worldwide and fifth in West Europe um, and North America in terms of gender equality. The score they were given uh, is 80% in how close they were to achieving full gender equality. Um, they also aim to increase the number of women in leadership roles within the Irish companies. Ireland's current individual goals for increasing their rank are to diversify the workforce and in education, especially in areas such as science, technology, engineering and maths. Thank you all for listening to our presentation. We will now leave room for any questions you guys might have for us.
Well, hello and welcome back to our presentation again. Uh, we've been students on this virtual platform for 10 weeks now and we aim to discuss what we have learned about Second Life in the context of the Sustainable Development Goals. These goals are a call to action by all countries, poor, rich and middle income, to promote prosperity while protecting the planet. We will be discussing these goals under the topic of society and Second Life. Under the topic of society fall six goals. No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, quality education, gender equality and reduced inequalities. Poverty is the state or condition of having little or no money, goods or means of support, the condition of being poor. Although Second Life is a free platform, not every person has the ability to access it. The main factors that decide whether a person can access the platform comes down to the individual's access to a good laptop or computer and fast Wi-Fi. Close to half the world population does not actually have internet access. This, the impoverished people of the world, therefore, would not have this opportunity available. In real life, money is essential to buy food, access medicine and shelter. In second life, a person could hypothetically live a fulfilled life without the need for money, since the avatar never dies and technically doesn't need shelter or to eat. The criteria for the existence of poverty in this way does not come into play. Linden dollars can be exchanged for real life money, around 240 Linden dollars per one US dollar. A person could potentially make real life money from Second Life by getting a job on the platform or creating locations or textures to sell to other residents. In the first 10 years since launch, 3.2 billion real life dollars were spent in Second Life. Second Life puts people from all walks of life in contact with one another, regardless of background or class. Each Second Life resident starts off with zero Linden dollars. This puts all first-time players on a level playing field, regardless of background or class. Linden dollars can be bought, however. This does, not, this does give wealthier residents the ability to quickly buy land and objects from the Second Life marketplace. Second Life and Real Life are very similar to each other, but they have very different standards. For example, in the real world, we are always hungry and have something to drink, in, and this is an in spendable activity. Avatars can eat and drink in Second Life, but this is not required. Avatars don't need hunger. There are no health problems in Second Life. Avatars do not suffer any physical, spiritual damage. Well-being is the at, is the highest level in, within Second Life. It can be used in health education for simulation purposes, education sites. It can have significant effect on mental health. An antisocial person in real life can be very sociable with their avatar here. Compared to real life, he will not hesitate to take a step because he knows that he will not lose anything if he makes a mistake here. Staying in this magnificent life for too long can be, have negative effect on real life. Looking at the screen for too long can cause problems with their eyes. A person can isolate himself from real life because he is more successful in life here and has a higher level of well-being. As everything is possible in the world of Second Life, of course it's also possible to get and give an education. We realize how important this is especially uh, on days when we can't go to school due to the pandemic. Some schools and course centers have built their own campuses inside the world of Second Life, knowing this opportunity. For example, like our school, Chai University or the IT Institute. Apart from the pandemic, the importance of the digital world is known to everyone in order to prepare the students of school for the business world. During the period then the concept of metaverse was popular. Students who have met this world will have an important advantage in their future lives. We gained these advantages early thanks to our esteemed instructors. I would like to thank my friends and myself very much for this. I hope that the days are not far away uh, when all the students in the world will study on a universal campus without economic difficulties difficulties from the region where the technology opportunities have reached every con corner of the world. Second Life encourages anonymity and interactivity. In terms of diversity, not only are there male and female avatars of all races, 
Non-human avatars such as fantasy creatures are available. All avatars are also equally strong. A child avatar is just as strong as a werewolf. Although the platform does not encourage discrimination, a landowner decides whatever to allow resident into their property and can, can have address codes, height restrictions and age restrictions. Second Life offers a unique opportunity for people with disabilities. We were introduced to the, the VAI Community Virtual Ability Incorporated is a non-profit that enables people with a wide range of disabilities to thrive in an online virtual world. Second Life is accessible for people with disabilities in many ways. For example, the Speak Easy Hut allows a resident to have captions in the chat. As we have discussed, Second Life is an excellent platform for learning opportunities. A person could decide to live as an avatar of the opposite gender of a wheelchair bond avatar and learn how these groups of people are treated and experience the world. Thank you for listening to our presentation. Discovering the world of Second Life has given us the students a very valuable experience. Sustainability of in economy. There are many defi definitions of economy, sustainability, and the difference between them is due to the use of different sustainability models as a starting point. Economic sustainability in, is uh, economic development that does not have a negative impact on ecological and social sustainability. Although they do have a negative effect. They are related to each other. I'm, I'm sorry for that. Economically sustainable business are those with guaranteed cash flows and profit, profitability. In economic sustainability, it is important to analyze the internal and external effects of business. Now, uh, I will talk about sustainability management. This means that sustainability management should consider the following uh, financial performance of business, uh, how business manage in intangible assets, the impact of business on the economy, the social and environmental impacts of business and how they are managed. Um, sustainability effects uh, in the economy is as affecting in business life as it's in the environment. Uh, sustainability encourages people, politicians, business and future generations to make long-term decisions taking into account. Acting sustain sustainability covers a 10-year time frame and considers more than short-term profit or loss. Uh, in short, since the economy covers all areas of our lives, it's the part that should be in our lives, whether in the short or long term. And continue. Uh, the economic of well-being highlights the need for putting people at the center of policy. It is important to move away from an attitude of growth first, redistribute and clean up later, towards a growth model that is equitable and sustain sustainable from the outset. Failure to to do so has economic and social consequences. Take the pressures building up, up on the middle class, a traditional source of growth and uh, stability in Europe. Examples of economic well-being, uh, surveys of life satisfaction, years of healthy life expectancy, uh, median household income, household net wealth, uh, percentage of people in vulnerable employment, uh, civic democratic partic participation rates, uh, feelings of, feelings of uh, safety and security. 
Economic well-being is defined as uh, having, having present and future financial security. Present fi financial security includes the ability of individuals, families, and communities to consistently meet their basic needs, including food, housing, utilities, healthcare, transportation, education, child care, clothing, and paid taxes, and have control over their day-to-day -day finance. Science economic activities in developed countries are closely linked to problems of po poverty and degrade degradation uh, in less developed countries, a strategy that takes into account su sustainable development should recognize this uh, link and aim to reduce the environmental burden and increase economic benefits for less developed markets affected by the activities of businesses. Um, four factors address in increasing the level of economic growth and welfare, uh, social progress, recognize, recognizing the needs of everyone, effective protection of the environment, uh, prudent use of natural resources, maintaining high and stable economic growth and employment levels. Uh, therefore, sustaining the economy is unnecessary as it's important. Thanks for listening. Uh, how can I become more economically sustainable? By refurbishing and upcycling up uh, items instead of buying brand new ones. Buy items in bulk as it reduces the price per unit bought. Use low energy products. Save money on electricity. You can also generate your own electricity by installing and using solar, solar panels on your house. Use public transport. This way you can invest in the economy and use less fuel. Use in terms for low cost labor as uh, this can increase the standard of labor by producing an experienced, experienced workforce. Buy and grow your own organic products. Take advantage of all government grants uh, were appli applicable because it is an effective way to build capital and invest in equipment, staff and more. Thank you for listening to us. Um, hi everyone, our topic is economy and enjoy our presentation. I will be discussing Linden Dollars within Second Life. Second Life is its own economy where residents can buy and sell using Linden Dollars. Linden Dollars was named after Linden Lab, the creators. Linden Dollars can be purchased using real US dollars. These dollars can be used to buy, sell and trade valuable goods such as land and clothing. There are also free pieces of clothing that you, your avatar can wear. Um, as, as Second Life has an economy, some residents and businesses thrive while others fall into bankruptcy similar to real life. The exchange rate for Linden Dollars from US Dollars is between 100 to 300 um, Linden Dollars to the equivalent of 1 US Dollar. This led to a gambling issue in 2007, um, which led to all forms of gambling in the marketplace to be banned by Linden Labs. Linden dollars was, were converted to Bitcoin by many residents. This caused speculation and money laundering. And during the years 2010, many speculated that um, Linden dollars could become real money with it having a legitimate virtual economy. Hello, friends. Today I will tell you about buildings in Second Life. And there are many ways to build in Second Life. First, you can design and build buildings yourself for free. And there are many shapes and textures in Second Life for this. Secondly, we can use the Second Life market system. In the area where we are now, these, these two options were used to construct this building. Through Second Life market, we can access many different buildings and rearrange them and make them suitable for us. 
we need Lindan dollars to buy these buildings from the second life market. If we design a beautiful building, we can sell it in the second life market. In this way, the buildings we build reach more people and we can earn Lindan dollars. We can make these buildings interactive by adding scripts to the buildings we build so our buildings can be more useful. Community such as a chat room and education in Second Life. Second Life has a functioning system that is far from being an ordinary game. You will have the opportunity to contact uh, the users who connect to Second Life from all over the world with their avatars, repetizing themselves that they have created here. Second Life it is not just a fancy chat room. Residents can do much more than communicate with each, each other. By entering Second Life users get the opportunity to get involved in many communities that serve various topics and points of view. In Second Life residents can go to social gatherings, live concerts, press conference, and even university classes. Just like we are doing right now. They can do a lot of things they, that, can, that you can do in real life. Things that are impossible in real world are possible in Second Life. Many people can find new friends and chat groups in the world of Second Life, where they uh, can browse freely. The lessons we have processed and speakers we have listened to are enough to pro. The second life is not just a game. How Second Life functions. Second Life is a virtual world created by Linden Lab. It is a place where users called residents can create a different version of themselves online called avatars. Second Life is completely free to everyone, but once you want to personalize your avatar more, you will need Linden dollars for that, and you can either buy them or mine, or mine for them. Economy, electricity, and code. The virtual world of Second Life has its own economy known as Linden dollars. You can obtain them by buying them with actual money to convert them into Linden dollars. This currency can only be used within Second Life platform. How it's made. Philip Rosendale, also known as Philip Linden, founded Linden Lab in 1999. Linden Lab first started off as a hardware company created towards the research and development of haptics. Linden Lab employees, uh, known as Lindens, needed a virtual world to go with their hardware. In 2001, they started building Linden World. It was a shooter game and first at first, and then its initial stages it was not released to the public. Later in the year, Beta was released and it was renamed to what we know today, Second Life. The resident, Stella Sunshine, joined Second Life on March 13, 2002. How many people use it? The most recent statistics have found are from the 20th of November 2020 in an interview for Vice News. Um, Altberg the current CEO of Linden Labs stated that Second Life has around 900,000 active residents. There was a spike in number of residents since COVID-19 with the amount of time we spent at home. The spike of numbers of residents since COVID-19... Oh, sorry, I repeat that. In Second Life, you can create your own avatar, communicate with people, build things, and even present. And you have the, the opportunity to do all this without getting up from your seat. In short, Second Life is a platform that allows us to break distances and barriers and do almost anything we can do in the real world. Thank you for listening in our uh, our presentation. So, hello and welcome to the Blue Circle. Uh, my name is Stephen, and today I'll be presenting alongside Matus, my Celine, and Maddie on clean and renewable energy.
and why we should all be using it. So what is renewable energy? Renewable energy is the energy flow existing in continuous and natural processes. It is defined by the ability to renew itself at the same rate or faster than the depletion rate of the energy source. Some examples of direct use of renewable energy are solar power applications and geothermal heating. These are things that we could all be using at home. A more indirect example would be wind turbines, such as the one behind me. Uh, the one that I'm pretending is powering the tiny lights on the pillars around us. Um, some major renewable energy sources are as follows. Solar energy, wind power, geothermal energy, biomass energy, hydrogen, hydraulic energy, wave energy, tidal, current, and ocean energy. So there's plenty to go around, really. Hello, everyone. My name is Botan Dunga, as known as Botaflex, and I will be going to present about solar energy and wind power, uh, while the energy, I'm sorry, solar energy, while the energy obtained from sunlight can be used directly in the form of light or heat energy, it can also be converted into electricity with the help of special mechanisms such as photovoltaic cells. A well-insulated residence of 120 square meters, annual energy requirement approximately kilowatts, the sun falling on its surface in suitable climatic conditions, the amount of energy is approximately kilowatts. However, solar cells have an efficiency about 15% today. According to Rain 21, as known as Renewable Energy Policy Network for the 21st century data, the installed photovoltaic cell power worldwide is megawatt. And wind power. Wind energy is converted into electric through tall towers with large blades called wind turbines. Winds can have a same hydrogen production as well as electricity generation. As a result of electrolysis of water with electricity to be obtained from the wind, water will be separated into oxygen and hydrogen elements, and hydrogen will be obtained in a very cheap way. Total installed power of wind turbines in the world. Germany megawatt installed capacity. United States MW installed capacity and Spain MW installed capacity. In 2010, the amount of energy produced by wind turbines is expected to reach 150, 150 GW. In 2010, efforts are made to meet 12% of the world's electricity demand from the wind energy. Thank you. Geothermal energy, it is the hot water, steam and gases formed by the heat accumulated in the depths of the Earth's crust. Depending on the temperature of the source, geothermal energy can be used in heating applications or this energy is used in electricity production. The total production worldwide in 2007 reached MW, a production is estimated around 11 GW for the year 2007 while the target figure for 2050 is around 140 GW. And geothermal energy central. Biomass energy. Uh, biomass energy is the use of organic materials such as plants by converting them into other substances, chemicals, fuel and energy using technologies such as gas collection, gasification, smoldering, and digestion. Today, some types of biomass energy are used effectively in industry, 
Apart from this, automobiles are produced using pure fuels obtained from seeds, sugar and vegetable oil or a mixture of these. And now, selling will continue. Hydrogen is not a natural fuel. By using primary energy resources, it's a scientific fuel that can be produced from different raw materials such as water, fossil fuels, and biomass. This production, which is very expensive at the moment, is done by separating hydrogen from elements such as water and natural gas. Fuel uh, cells are devices that generate electricity by taking hydrogen as fuel and oxygen from the air. As a result, they only give water and heat to the outside. Hydrogen is an energy carrier that will mark the 21st century. It can be transported easily and safely, and there is little energy loss in its transportation. It can be used everywhere, inexhaustible and clean. It can be easily converted into heat, electrical and mechanical energy. It doesn't contain carbon, it is economical and light. Hydrogen energy researchers are carried out in many countries. Currently, some cars operate on, on a hybrid fuel method using both gasoline and hydrogen. Thus, the, uh, thus, the amount of polluted air release can be reduced by uh, 30 or 40%. Hydraulic energy, it's the energy produced by water power. The best example is dams. Rainwater or melted snow water collected in the catchment basins flows and turns the turbines, generating electricity with generators connected to the turbines. Today, only one third of the potential hydraulic energy is utilized. This rate corresponds to 70% of the world electricity production and cons constitutes 69% uh, of renewable energy. Uh, 125 hydroelectric power plants have been taken into operation in Turkey so far and the total installed power of these power plants in MW. Well, energy, the energy of waves occurring in large bodies of water such as oceans and seas is utilized. Countries whose coasts are exposed to strong winds can make, uh, meet 5% or more of their energy needs from wave energy. According to the data of the U.S. Department of Energy, uh, when the wave energy generated on all the coasts of the world is collected, uh, three to uh, two two to three million MW of energy is realized, but their contribution to the total energy production on a global scale is around 1%. So it is the conversion of kinetic or potential energy of water bodies displayed by tides or ocean current into electrical energy. So, the conversion of kinetic energy of the regular currents in the seas and oceans into electrical energy by means of turbines placed on the seabed is defined as current energy. And then we have ocean energy. Um, it aims to generate electricity by using the temperature difference between the deep ocean waters and the sun-heated surface water. So, according to estimates, less than 1% of solar energy from the ocean could provide more than 20 times the daily energy consumption of, um, of the United States. And we question why renewable energy? So, at some point, a country's independence is now determined by its potential to need its own energy. So, the energy need in our world is increasing by approximately 4 to 5 percent every year. And on the other hand, fossil fuels reserves that need that, um, that needs being depleted much faster. So, even the most optimistic um, 
forecast, it is predicted that oil reserves will be depleted to a large extent in by 2030. So at least, um, um, at least it will not be able to meet the need. So a usage period of approximately one year for coal with current reserves and approximately one year for natural gas um, is estimated. And uh, the use of fossil fuels has also increased uh, the world average temperature to the highest value of, um, of the last millennium. So causing a not noticeable increase in natural disasters such as floods, storms, that cause millions of dollars in damage as well as intense air pollution. So the most important features of renewable energy sources are that they help protect the environment by reducing carbon dioxide emissions. They contribute to the reduction of foreign dependency in energy and increase employment because they're domestic sources and they receive widespread and strong support from the public. And in 2002, report of the um, International Energy Ed Agency, the share of renewable energy sources in global energy production is stated as 13.8%. So the distribution of this share is given as 80% com combustible, combustible renewable waste, 16.5% waste, um, hydro energy, 0.5% other, others wind, uh, geothermal, solar, wave, tidal events, etc. And although it is concluded from the figure that the usage area of renewable energy sources is quite limited, it is estimated that the importance of renewable energy sources will increase um, gradually during the year. Thank you. Okay. The, this um, experience, maybe it was your first time being in a metaverse or a virtual world or maybe even you were in, in a metaverse or virtual world before, maybe it was your first presentation here or a project like that. So this is, I think this is a valuable experience for you guys. It is done in a unique way with a cross-cultural teamwork through virtual environments. And uh, it is also about a very uh, important topic today which is the sustainability so there were a lot of things to take away from this experience in my opinion and I hope you all did that as far as I see and I can witness that you did and I think you did an amazing job honestly like this is this is not a re easy task as well to do some presentation like that which with people you you never seen in your lives and uh, with from different cultures different countries and you can only communicate through the digital tools with them so uh, that was really a hard task to achieve and may i echo what Magua has said i'm not going to repeat everything but i'm going to uh, support what Magua has said in my thanks to everybody who's been involved and in how impressed I've been with you students in terms of our presentation. Before we finish, I'd like to invite Wisdom uh, to say a few closing words. I want to just applaud everyone here for the time and effort you've put into this, including the professors <coughs> who have spent a lot of time uh, making sure that everything runs well. She